Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I am Dr. El Sayed. I'm a radiology consultant working in the UK. Today I'm going to share with you how to improve your Viva practice and Viva skills by learning from your mistakes to enhance your learning activities and to improve your learning curve by watching how other people are tackling the x-rays and how they are falling in some simple mistakes that you could look at and analyze and then move on to be able to pass FRCR examination. Once you've seen the pattern of mistakes uh, candidates are doing all the time, you will then be able to reflect, to approach an exam and improve your skills in tackling any radiograph to be able to pass the uh, FRCR examination. If you are new to this channel, please make sure you like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get learn from your mistakes videos that you could see and practice on and learn from other people's mistakes so you don't fall in the same mistake yourself. Please make sure you switch any distractions off and make sure that you are viewing these uh, videos through your laptop or your PC so that you can get uh, the maximum benefit from looking at these x-rays. I hope you enjoy this session of Viva and please make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get my next video on learn from your mistakes by practicing Viva cases. Thank you. So you've got this patient here. He's a 55 years old patient with chest pain. All right, so this is a frontal AP erect chest, a plain chest radiograph of a 50 year old male complaining of chest pain. So um, the first abnormality that caught my eye is a right lower zonal uh, opacity uh, with convex upper margin, uh, partially silhouetting the lateral right hemidiaphragm. The other abnormality that caught my eye is a left axillary dense tiny shadows. Uh, I'd like to correlate this with any history of uh, maybe shoulder or axillary surgery. Uh, are you talking about the dense structures? Yes, on the left uh, shoulder. Yeah, they are rotator cuff repair All anchors. Right. Okay, so I can also see uh, a shadow projected over the uh, uh, root of the neck on the right side. Uh, there is also related uh, deformity of the uh, uh, right upper uh, uh, thoracic inlet. Trying to search for any other obvious findings. I'm checking my view areas. The cardium intestinal contour looks fine. There is a slight convex right paravertebral convexity. I think might be a rotational a little bit because the film is a little bit rotated. Maybe it's the aortic outline. I can see uh, a right paratracheal uh, convex thickening. Maybe it's a right paratracheal lymph node, maybe. Or maybe it's related to the rotation. Um, the airway looks fine. The other lung fields, other than the right basal opacity, look fine. Regarding the skeleton, clavicles are fine. The shoulders are fine, uh, other than from the uh, left shoulder surgery. Scapular fine, I cannot any, find any other soft tissue abnormality. So in summary, there is um, right basal pulmonary um, consolidation probably, and right paratracheal uh, thickening, uh, sorry, uh, right paratracheal shadow, and right root of the neck shadow. I suspect these are lymph nodes, and I suspect this is uh, right basal uh, consolidation. I cannot see any hilar masses. I'd like to assess this patient by contrast enhanced CT of the uh, neck and chest. My differential diagnosis is a malignant condition with lymph nodes. What is the malignant condition? Sorry? Malignant condition was possible lymphadenopathy. So this is a contrast enhanced axial CT cuts for a chest and upper abdomen. Mm -hmm. So regarding the uh, root of the neck shadow, it's either was a projectional finding or it's not covered by this field of view. I think it's more of a projectional artifact. The vessels look fine. There is no obvious right paratracheal lymph node, so mostly it was due to the rotation, maybe. Okay, so then the abnormality is the right paravertebral line. 
it's an aggressive looking vertebral lesion destroying the lower thoracic vertebra with significant soft tissue components. There is some basal atelectasis and conservation. Maybe it's just a in coincidental pneumonia with air bronchograms. Okay, so the destructive process is centered over the disc space. So I'm more inclined to condyrodiscitis uh, rather than a malignant tumor, because malignancy would be expected to affect the uh, vertebral body uh, primarily. There is an urgent finding, the retropulsed fragment. I'd like to convey this finding urgently to the neurosurgeon uh, for possible cord compression, maybe uh, MRI of the cord to assess any cord uh, signal abnormality. Uh, is the patient feverish? He was unwell. Is it just unwell? Is it uh, like acute unwell or? Just unwell. All right. Okay, I'm searching for any uh, stigmata of surgery overlying this area. I cannot find any. Okay, I'm searching for any pulmonary nodules, bony lesions. So in summary, uh, there is uh, uh, an aggressive process centered over lower uh, intervertebral disc with uh, soft tissue uh, edema related to it. I think my final diagnosis would be, or the top of my differential diagnosis would be uh, spondylodiscitis. Uh, maybe associated with pneumonia, maybe this patient is immunocompromised in some way so that he has associated pneumonia and spondylodiscitis. There is a retro, retro pulse uh, fragment that needs urgent assessment by MRI and referral for the uh, neurosurgery. Um, uh, that's it. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Excellent. So. I'm going to criticize you. Again, I don't do this to annoy you or to upset you. I'm just doing this to give you a few criticisms so that you can learn from these mistakes. I myself have done lots of mistakes in my training in, in radiology in the UK and I've learned from my mistakes and the stuff which I got wrong and I got really criticized on is the stuff which I really improved and I became better on. So please take everything I say in the right way. It is an AP radiograph, okay? And when you're telling me AP radiograph, you need to think about rotation. You haven't told me it's rotated. You told me at the, later on that it could be because of rotation, but you haven't told me from the beginning. If you don't, you're not getting it right, just practice. Or this is an AP rotated radiograph with good inspiration, even shorter and better. Short and sweet will make the examiner happier. Okay? And as we said, the examiner is there for a long day. He's examining many people, come from different backgrounds, so make it entertaining for him. You mentioned about the right paratracheal lesion, and you said could could be, could be. You didn't sound certain to me. Mm -hmm. Even if we are saying it could be, you're not sure, which you're allowed to do in the exam, try to be more certain. Now, you did something very good, which you spotted the paraspinal shadow. And you spotted this, if you remember, when you said, I'm going to review my review areas. And when you started going to review areas, then you spotted it. And this highlights the importance of going through the review areas religiously all the time. Mm -hmm. Don't just jump over it. When you're going through the review areas, mention where you're checking. So we say, Looking at the apices, I can't see any uh, apical lung lesion. There are no definite hilar densities or hilar masses is seen, but I can see a prominent right paraspinal soft tissue shadow. So you found the abnormality, which is excellent, but then you said it could be because of rotation. Now, this is what you learned today. Paraspinal soft tissue abnormality can't be because of rotation. Right. If it's there, it's there. So the hilar size shadow can change from rotation. Paratracheal lymph node can look at dense from rotation, but paraspinal line, if it's there, it's there. Especially when you follow it down, I'm sure you can appreciate it goes all the way down. And we did mention this last time, when it crosses the diaphragm, it is real. Yeah. Okay? So this is something you need to learn from today. You need to be familiar with this abnormality over there in the shoulder. This is shoulder anchor. You shouldn't be mentioning this as a question. You should be familiar with this. And if you're going to highlight it, just say, I can see surgical rotator cuff anchors on the left side. Don't stop on it and say, this is an abnormality. It is not an abnormality. It is post-operative, well-known change. Is that okay? Yes, totally. And also try to group the bones in one lump. Don't mention, I can't see anything in the clavicle or in the chest, or just say there's no any destructive bony lesion seen. End of the story. The second uh, thing uh, is when you came to the CT scan, uh, 
uh, you've spotted the abnormality and you mentioned it's aggressive lesion, which is correct, but you need to highlight, give it, give it the full eight out of eight. So you mentioned about the retropulse fragment, which is good. You mentioned about contacting your surgeon and doing MRI, but you didn't talk a lot or enough about, you know, the fuzzy uh, into this disc space. So like whatever it looks like fluid or soft tissue, paraspinal soft tissue. And also try to be quicker than this. You took a long time to go through the cases. So you need to have it in your mind that, oh, I found paraspinal abnormality. I'm going to check this straight away. I did like that you mentioned that uh, what you saw on the neck and paratracheal line is due to rotation, which was very good from you. And everyone should learn from this approach. I think it's good. Uh, but don't forget that you have to mention the paraspinal soft tissue thickening in this case. Okay, perfect. Thank well you. done. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I hope this was helpful to you. If you found this helpful, please make sure that you hit the notification bell and subscribe so that you get my next video on how to pass FRCR examination by learning fewer mistakes. And thank you.